Hi everyone, it's an exciting week this week. We've got Parsha to Sava and it's also going to be Purim. So I want to speak a little bit about both. So this week's Hadra, Parsha to Sava, it's all about the um, big day Kohen, the clothes that the Kohen God all wore. And it goes into a huge amount of detail, exactly what they're all made of, all the different fabrics, exactly how they look. Um, the Kohen God has eight different garments that he wears. Um, he's got a coat, he's got trousers, he's got a hat, he's got a breastplate with all different coloured stones on it. Goes into a huge amount of detail about all the different things that he has to wear when he's um, fulfilling the Avod or the service in the Mishkan or the Beis HaMikdash. Now similarly in the Purim story we also see there's a huge amount of effort put into describing every scene. We know exactly what the palace looks like, you know exactly what it's made of, it's got pillars, it's got marble, it's got hangings, all the different colours and the fabrics and even the characters within the story you often hear a lot about um, all the props involved, you know the crown or the scepter or Mordechai had to walk around in sackcloth because he was in mourning or when Haman was parading him through the town because um, he was being rewarded for saving the king's life he had to wear the clothes of kingship and ride on the royal horse and again there's this very big focus on what everything looks like now it seems strange right you think all these things are just superficial that they're just costumes or props so why do we need to know all this detail? It seems very strange. So I think that actually that the point the Torah is making in these very vivid descriptions is that actually props and costumes are exactly what they are, but they have a huge effect on us. In what way? So imagine that you're actually an actor in a play. And so, you know, for whatever role you are, say you're the king, so you have to wear a crown, you have to have your scepter and you have your royal robes. And what is the point of that? It's not only to convince the audience that you're the king. What makes a really good actor is somebody who actually thinks he is the king. He's not just acting as the king. By putting on all of those garments, you actually feel that you are the king. So you're not having to convince your audience anymore that you're the king. You really are the king. Similarly, when Mordechai puts on his sackcloth or, you know, when nowadays when people are mourning and they have to tear their clothes, it's not just to tell other people that you are in mourning. The very act of doing that makes you feel like you're in mourning. So we know this from our everyday life as well. You know, the, what you're wearing on any occasion very much affects your mood, your personality, the way you act. You know, especially at the moment when no one's got very dressed up for a long time. If you're in a pyjama, you know, if you're in your pyjamas all day long, you feel in a pyjama -y kind of mood. You're just like chilling out, relaxing. It's very different feel to like putting on a business suit and going to a business meeting where, again, it's not just that you're presenting yourself as a business person. It's for you to feel businesslike or, you know, you go to the beach, you feel very different because you're in a swimsuit, right? That has a very different kind of feeling when you're lounging about by a pool than, again, like, you know, wearing a ball gown dress to a fancy dinner. Each time you put on a different outfit, it, you, it makes you feel different. You act differently. It affects your personality. So it's not just other people's perception of you, it's also your own perception of yourself. It really affects you in that way. So in terms of the big day kahuna, the clothes at the Kohen Godel wall, there's two items that I find particularly striking. So one is he wears this long coat and on the bottom of this coat, he's got a hem and all the way along the hem, he's got alternately pomegranate and bells. Um, so it goes all the way around, pomegranate bell, pomegranate bell. And he literally cannot take a step without the bells jingling. So every moment, every time he makes any move, he is constantly aware that he is the Kohen Godel. So it's like a very tangible, real reminder of exactly who he is the whole time. And again, a lot of the Avoda he does, he's by himself. No one else is allowed in there. Even when he's in the Kodesh HaKadoshim, the holiest of the holiest on Yom Kippur, 
then he's there by himself. It's not to tell anyone else that he's the Kohen Godel, it's to tell him that he's the Kohen Godel. And one other item he wears, he has a golden um, a golden plate that goes around his forehead. And engraved on this golden plate is the phrase Kodesh Hashem, that it's holy to Hashem. Um, that he is holy to Hashem, that the Avodah he's doing is holy to Hashem, um, that the people are holy to Hashem. It's literally written on his forehead. I mean, imagine having like a tattoo on your head just to say you are holy or that Hashem is here. I mean, how can you possibly do anything wrong when you're walking around with that on your forehead? And the Pasuk actually says that it, the wording it uses, that it should be on his forehead constantly. And to me, it sounds like, you know, literally it should be there constantly. But also that it's always on his mind. Like literally you associate this forehead, that's your brain, isn't it? The way you think about things. So it should be constantly on his mind, who he is and who he's representing and the role that he has to play in terms of looking after the people. So, you know, nowadays we also have certain mitzvahs to do with how we dress. You know, if you're a man, you have to cover your head. You have a constant reminder and it's irrelevant what it looks like. I know we might think it's relevant, but actually whether it's a black hat or a kippah gar or a black velvet couple, anything will do because it doesn't matter what it looks like to somebody else. The only person is actually there to remind is the person wearing it. It's not to tell other people that you're Jewish. It's to tell you that you're Jewish, that you're identifying yourself to yourself as being a Jewish person. And similarly with um, the laws of modesty, when you're more dressed, then more covered up, you're, you act differently than, as I gave an example before, when you're kind of lounging around and, you know, maybe you're on holiday with your family and you're hanging out by the pool. It's a very different kind of way of being. You feel different, you act different, your, um, your awareness of yourself is different. And we know that we put a lot of effort into dressing right for the right occasions because, you know, we want to have the right mindset the whole time of who we are. So with Purim this week, it's an opportunity really for a massive Kiddush Hashem because it's a very special Yom Tov for us. Purim is, it's a fun one. But it's also, it's the one that tells us how to act when we're in Golis, when, you know, when Hashem is hidden to us and less obvious to us. That's what the Purim story is all about. It's about the Jewish people in Golis and um, trying to find the hidden Hashem in the world. Whereas, you know, at the time of Moshe and the big day Kahuna, it was very obvious that, you know, Hashem's there and he's written on your forehead. Now it's harder to find. It's less obvious to us. But this week, this year, especially when we've got Purim um, under these circumstances where it's not as festive as it's been in previous years, let's take the opportunity. There's four mitzvahs on Purim. There's hearing the Megillah. There's having your Purim Su'uda. There's Matana Le'avionim, giving money to poor people. And there's Mishlach Manos, giving um, food packages to another person. So whereas in previous years, maybe we blew a big budget on Mishloach Manas and we, you know, it had to be the fanciest and all wrapped in cellophane. Maybe this is a year when we're not hopefully going around to loads of different people's houses and delivering loads of different Shloach Manas because under the circumstances, that's probably not the best thing to do. Let's spend all that money that we would have been doing on that, um, giving that to poor people instead, again, in a COVID safe way, doing it online and let's limit our Mishloach Manas to people that actually, you know, maybe it would make a huge difference to them that someone's thinking of them. Not your obvious list of friends that you give to every year, but the people that, you know, maybe have slipped off your list or that you've lost contact with or may have had a harder year. Let's bear them in mind instead. So I hope everyone has an amazing Purim and a very nice Shabbos and yeah, enjoy the week.